You do the crime, you do the time. But for recently released prisoners, the price of freedom can come at a high cost. Life on the outside is described as the silent sentence. Challenges like finding a job and somewhere to live at a time when ex-inmates are at their most vulnerable make the risk of reoffending high. Reporter Varani Pereira explains the work being done to support them. Cassius Kukutai is sowing the seeds of a better future for him and his whanau. Love being here. It's good to be around native plants. Te Whangai Trust Native Nursery is set amongst 36 hectares near the Firth of Thames and giving former prisoners like Cassius a second chance. I feel like I'm a whole man instead of a half a man. He's only too aware of the difficulties facing ex-prisoners. Cassius left jail 20 years ago after serving a five-year sentence for aggravated robbery. I had nothing to come out to it's no good if you just send them out and there's no support after that. All they had was, here's $350 and away you go. The amount of cash Cassius got two decades ago to restart life on the outside is exactly the same as the grant release prisoners got last week. Upon their release, former inmates receive a one-off $350 grant that's designed to help them with their initial setup costs on the outside. That figure hasn't changed in 33 years. Over that time, many experts have recommended that the Steps to Freedom grant be raised as it falls well short of covering essential costs. Unlike other benefits, the grant is not indexed to inflation or wage growth. Cost of living's gone up, and yet this amount has stayed stagnant for 30 years. Tui Alu is CEO of Te Pā, a kaupapa Māori organisation that helps reintegrate recently released prisoners back into society. She calls the meagre payment barbaric. How can you have freedom with $350 on release. You have to pay for a birth certificate, get a driver's license, medical costs, food and clothing costs, and accommodation, phone, it all racks up. That's $1,000 right there to be able to transact in society. How far does $350 go? It only lasts you not even one week especially with everything going up to you. And then after that, you've got nothing. Why do you think there's been no appetite to increase the grant? I'm not really sure, but I think it could be perceived as an incentive. It's actually not an incentive. It is something they need to reduce recidivism. We've had lots of instances where our people have said, it's too hard here, I just want to go back inside. I get three meals a day, a roof over my head, a warm bed, and it breaks my heart when that happens. We've come across guys and their only option is to go and re-offend because they haven't got accommodation, they haven't got any resources. So as a community, that's something we need to be ashamed of. Adrian Dalton runs Te Whangai Trust, the charity that's upskilled hundreds of ex-inmates like Cassius and got them into work so they don't have to rely on a benefit. They're paying tax and they're building their self-esteem and their family have really good role models to be proud of. And that's really important. Their kids have seen them in jail and now they see them in the community contributing. Last year, more than 8,000 people received the Steps to Freedom grant when they left prison. No support network. Adrian agrees the one-off cash injection isn't sufficient for getting back on your feet. Do you think that former prisoners are set up to fail? Former prisoners who come out have to have a really determined mindset to counter the obstacles. So unless we have a transition, and have support mechanisms to stop that revolving door, we are setting them up for fail. And money doesn't fix 
something solely. You've got to have transition, you've got to have a process, um, and people have to go through that process in their own time. In 2022, Adrian was awarded a New Zealand Order of Merit, recognising the work she and her husband Gary have done rehabilitating offenders. We're hugely dependent on philanthropic trust to help us bridge the gap between what we can generate ourselves and what we need to pay everyone a living wage. The couple in their 70s are struggling financially themselves, driven to keep going by the need they see. We're ashamed of our social statistics. So as communities, we have to be brave enough to create systemic change. Otherwise, we just have a compounding social deficit that will socially and fiscally bankrupt us as a nation. Financially, we can't continue this. We have to have support. After 18 years of doing it alone, they're finally hearing the right noises from the Minister of Social Development, Louise Upston. I honestly believe that this government have got the mandate to uh, support this. Did you think that at the time of the election? No, I didn't, to be honest. And I've been really pleasantly surprised and I'm really excited about the possibilities. In a response to the hui, the Minister of MSD and Employment acknowledged the steps to Freedom Grant hadn't been increased in decades and says she's seeking advice on any changes that could be made to existing financial support for recently released prisoners, adding that MSD also offers other payments like those to help with emergency housing costs. Even so, finding affordable and long-term housing is yet another challenge beyond the prison gate. The government just announced the other day that Fano with children in emergency housing will go to the top of the list. I endorse that, but that means our people get pushed further to the bottom of the list. Recognising that having a place to stay is crucial to reducing the risk of reoffending. The PA also offer a range of temporary emergency housing options upon release. Housing is one of the biggest linchpins that informs and underpins successful reintegration, and we don't have enough of it. And so therefore our people are forced into boarding houses, into motels, and some of these accommodation are not fit for purpose. But when there's nothing, what choice do you have? You cannot reintegrate a prisoner into society unless you heal, enable them to restore, and then transform themselves. Every life that you see transition into a, a blossoming and contributing individual is huge. After experiencing the stigma of serving time for most of his life, at 59, Cassius has found that working amongst nature has done wonders for restoring his mana. It's so hard to try and get up from all these put down. But this place here has done a lot for me. It's just lifted my self-esteem, my confidence. This place here has given me that chance. And that's the reason why I'm here.